Good morning, everyone, or good evening, depending where you are at the moment. And thank you, welcome, and thank you for your interest in OpenRT's webinar sessions. So this time, we're going to take a look at testing the vehicles of the future in real time. We have a pretty stacked lineup today, as you can see. Um, so today, we're going to talk about the challenges and solutions for complete automotive testing with the focus in hybrid and full electric vehicles. So we have the partic participation of six specialists on this subject. So those being myself. So my name is Derek Boychuk. I'm a customer solutions architect at Opal RT Technologies. We also have Rick Simshik, VP of Engineering at eCamion. We also have two special guests from the University of Toronto, Dr. Ali Nabavi, Senior Research, Research Associate, and Mustafa Mahfouz, who is a PhD candidate. We then have Anita Athanasis, who is a sales manager at Comemzo. And lastly, we have the participation of Dr. Ben Black, Offering Manager of Electric Vehicle Drivetrain Validation at National Instruments. So as you can see from the outline uh, here, we have, a, like I said, a pretty stacked lineup, and we have a lot of exciting content to go through. So let's get started. By the way, there will be a Q&A period at the end of this webinar. So please feel free to ask questions along the way during the presentations. You can simply type them into the GoToMeeting window. And there will be a total of three polls throughout the webinar for you to answer. OK, so I'm going to start off a little bit. So the idea here is I'm just going to give you a quick little introduction on some of the main topics that we're looking at in terms of automotive testing. And then the specialists will talk right after me. Um, we'll talk a little bit more in detail about each one of them. OK, so the idea is to kind of open up the floor, and then each one will kind of go into their own domain very, very detailed, and we can go from there. So the three main topics that we're going to look at, I think, throughout this webinar would be charging, the powertrain, and the battery. Now, of course, there are some smaller um, parts within all of these, but those are like the, kind of the three main topics that we're going to talk about uh, throughout this webinar. As you can see listed here on the right, we sort of have what you know a full electric vehicle would look like. But of course, the focus being on electric vehicles in general. So whether they're hybrid, whether they're full electric, plug-in, et cetera, that's kind of the idea of what we're going for in this webinar. So when we start talking about hardware in the loop, so HIL, every time we mention HIL, we're talking about hardware in the loop. Of course, traditionally, what you're looking at is a real ECU, so something on the left-hand side here, that will be connected, let's say, to your vehicle or to your car. Okay. So the idea here is now we're going to be simulating either one part of the car or many parts of the car so that the ECU thinks it's talking to the real uh, vehicle. So the idea, of course, is to replace that car with, let's say, a bench or a PXI chassis or some sort of hardware that includes real-time simulation to be able to emulate and simulate the rest of the vehicle. And by doing this, of course, the ECU ta thinks it's talking to the real vehicle. So this is pretty basic stuff, but I, I thought I'd introduce it for those of you who don't know. The next step would be the power level. Okay, So the P in P Hill stands for power hardware in the loop. And of course, now we're talking about you know maybe having a real electric motor or a real load okay, and being almost like a real dyno. So in that sense, you know, having the real power level talking to your inverter or to a certain part of uh, your controller, you can therefore kind of go the next step in the V-cycle, which would be closer to having like a real test bed. But of course, since we're going to be emulating the motors on the FPGA or on the CPU side of things, you know, we don't have to worry about things breaking down or expensive costs in order to maintain those devices. Now I'm just going to quickly talk about the NI and OpalRT partnership. Um, so of course, on the left-hand side here, we have NI. On the right-hand side, we have OpalRT. Each of them you know, are complementary to one another. So for NI, you know, we have Veristan. That's going to be the focus, I think, on today's presentation. But of course, you know, LabVIEW is still there, and LabVIEW is still um, very appropriate for this, this automotive testing. So Veristan, you know, as, as, as some of you may not know, it's a way to incorporate many different platforms now to be able to simulate them all within, let's say, the, the NI hardware. Okay, so when we start talking about Veristan, of course, we can't. We have to talk about the whole ecosystem. So, you know, Testan, Diadem, again, LabVIEW, those are all now part of the, the NI world. Um, we support ASAM standards, of course, um, and then, of course, the, the MATLAB Simulink integration is extremely important as well. So, with Veristan, you know, we are able to incorporate MATLAB models, Simulink models, and other third-party toolboxes now into the NI ecosystem. All of this can now talk to the modular hardware of NI, so whether it's a you know, serial, PXI, if you want to signal condition those with an SLSC chassis, this is all part of the NI game. Then we have OpalRT, 
who, you know, we provide the unique expertise for real-time simulation. So we've been doing this for, you know, up to 20 years. So we have the fastest real-time simulation of power electronics using our EHS solver. Um, we face challenges not only in the automotive industry, but in the aerospace, in defense, in power systems, power electronics. So we're, we're quite well-rounded. And, you know, just so you know, we've, we've delivered more than 100 power hub in the loop projects throughout. <laughs> and one thing to mention also is, you know, because we work so closely with NI, not only are we, you know, Opal RT experts, but we also have a, a very good share of integrators, hardware designers, and LabVIEW architects that, you know, work at Opal RT. So this brings us now to the hill for electrical vehicle powertrain. Okay, so this is kind of like the, the bread and butter of what we're talking about right here. And essentially, the architecture looks something like this. Okay, so on the right-hand side of the diagram, you have, you know, your host computer, whether you're using Verisign, whether you're using other platforms. Essentially, that is where you're going to be using your host computer or your Windows PC, basically, to create your models, your tests, your automation network. All the framework can be done there. That will then now communicate with the three blue blocks. So we'll start off now with your, you know, NIPXI, Compact Rio. So the, the NI hardware here that can involve the real-time processing, the FPGA, the communications, et cetera. The list is, is endless. And then on the left-hand side, you know, if you want to be able to connect to your DUT or to your device under test, sometimes, you know, the standard signal levels of the DAT cards, et cetera, need a little bit of conditioning or perhaps your device needs a little bit of conditioning before it gets into it. So that's where we can introduce now the SLSC chassis. So the SLSC chassis, as we're gonna see later on, is a way to make sure that your device is happy and that all of the signals are expected to be what they're expected to be, okay? And the third piece of the puzzle would be the battery cell emulator. So our partner, Kamemzo, will provide the hardware to have a very, very precise battery cell emulation so that all three of these can work in unison to have your device under test uh, talk correctly. So that's kind of the overall architecture that we're looking at here. Of course, this can change, but this is more of the, the general uh, view. In terms of hardware, I think I've mentioned it a few times already, but of course we're talking, you know, uh, let's say a PXI chassis in this case, so a PXI 1092. Um, for the real-time simulation aspect, we're looking at, you know, a real-time controller running a real-time OS. So for example, a PXIE 8840, the real-time version. So that is something that we would recommend definitely. And as you're gonna see later on in the custom device that we've created with Veristan, um, we do recommend this hardware, okay? So the real-time controller can run many things, of course. You know, it can run the actual controller, so the ECU if you wanna emulate it, but it can also run what we call the slower dynamics or the slower systems. So things like the batteries, the loads, et cetera, things that don't require that much speed in terms of you know, megahertz, you could run them, let's say, on the, the real-time controller. Next, in terms of FPGA, IO, and I guess communications as well. So of course, we have all of the modular and the modularity of the, the PXI world and the serial world. So um, if ever you want to be able to you know, run our, let's say, our add-on, you would require an FPGA. So we would, we would recommend the 7868R because it's IO count, because of the type of FPGA it supports. So by running this now, you can run you know, your motor, you can run your, your basically your whole motor drive plus more, for example, on the FPGA very, very quickly. And the last piece of the puzzle, like I mentioned, would be the battery cell emulation. So we do need that high amount of precision. We do need that you know, unique cell by cell characteristics. And that's where Comemzo comes in. So of course, I'm not gonna go in detail here because we have a, one of our guest speakers, Anita, is gonna talk way more in detail than I can. But essentially, those three pieces of the puzzle allow us to have a full integrated EV bench. In terms of software, so like I mentioned, NI Veristan, um, there is a link. So when you do get the slides later on, you'll be able to click on this wiki link. I do recommend you check it out. This goes in detail about what is exactly is, is the add-on for Veristan. So for some context, Opal RT has developed a custom device, which is called the Opal RT Power Electronics Module that lives inside of Veristan. And it's available in the NI Package Manager channel. So you can download it, for example. And it's basically a way to run our EHS tool, okay? on a PXI chassis, on a serial chassis uh, using Veristan. So we're gonna see in the next few slides, there's a very, very streamlined process of doing it and the workflow is extremely simple. Um, the next slide will kind of show, I'm not sure if it's gonna come up nicely in this webinar, but this is a, a moving image. So as you can see, this is the UI in Veristan, okay, that of course you can customize as you like, but essentially what we're showing here is we have a, one PMSM that's running on an FPGA, okay, so in this case, a Kintec 7 and the 7868R, and we're able to run that, that emulation on the FPGA extremely quickly uh, using our EHS tool. 
And as a user, as you're going to see in the following slides, it's extremely simple. You don't have to worry about anything in terms of the FPGA. It's all kind of done um, by using parameters and stuff like that. So I'll just let this go a little bit more. We can zoom in a little bit on the inverter and stuff like that. OK, now it's going to loop again. So next slide. So for the Veristan add-on, like I said, the, the the brain or the really the, the 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 core behind it is what we call our EHS tool. So the EHS tool is an OpenRT developed solver that runs directly on the FPGA, and it doesn't you don't require any FPGA programming. So no VHDL, nothing else. It's simply you going and creating your circuit in the tools that I'll list in the next slide, and our tool will automatically put that on the FPGA for you in a matter of seconds. Okay, just some stats. So um, our tool can support you know, 144 switches without any delays. Uh, we can simulate as low as 110 nanoseconds, depending on the size of the circuit. And of course, if you have very high switching frequencies, up to 200 kilohertz, which is rare, but it mean, they exist, you know, we could support those as well. When you're going to be connecting this, let's say, to your real ECU, um, of course, we require a low latency between closing the loop. So by us running this you know, in the nanosecond range, we can basically close the loop, I think, within 1.5 microseconds. Uh, no, no problems there. For third-party support, like I mentioned, so uh, there's another animated image on the right if you guys want to look. So essentially, you define your circuit model path. So the circuit model can be made with Simscape power systems or Simscape electrical toolboxes from MATLAB Simulink. It can be created in Plex, PSIM, and iMultiSim. And essentially, all you do is define the name of the model or the path of the model. You click on Reload, and it'll automatically take everything it needs to be able to send it to the FPGA. So the moment you want to change your circuit, all you do is define a new circuit path, and it'll automatically do it for you. There's no regeneration of FPGA code here at all. Okay, So that's really important to mention, because that can be a huge, huge time saver. For scenarios and faults, um, so for sure in California, but I mean, any users that are using EHS see the, the benefits of this, this feature. Uh, the scenarios feature is a feature that we've developed for the EHS toolbox to allow you to change any parameter you want um, inside the circuit model that's running on the FPGA without stopping the model. So essentially, without going into too much detail, we will automatically create an, an, an Excel spreadsheet for you, okay, with every single column pertaining to a component inside of your circuit. With that, what you can do ahead of time is define different scenarios, okay, up to 512 scenarios, depending on the circuit, with any type of fault, any type of short, anything you really want to do to your circuit, and have it you know, happen while the FPGA is running the model. So you don't need to press stop, you don't need to press pause. You can, of course, automate this if you'd like to. And therefore, you can do a whole bunch of testing of your control without having, ever having to stop the model. Now, of course, this is super important because you know, when you're connecting, let's say you're doing hardware in the loop scenario, and you have your ECU connected to the simulation. Of course, if it's running steady state and nothing's happening, then you know, OK. But what you really care about is what's going to happen if an IGBT fails, or what's going to happen if something is shorted between something. So the idea here is you can actually emulate those all, but in a very easy and direct manner. And then you can see kind of how your control responds that way. Of course, we're talking about the drive, so we have to talk about the motors as well. So OpenRT has a very vast um, model library for you know, PMSMs, IMs, et cetera. So all of these okay, will be available inside the Veristan toolbox or inside the Veristan add-on um, at one point. And by doing that, you'll be able to now to run any type of motor you'd like. You can have all the parameters you see here. You can have your lookup tables, whether they're 2D, 3D. Um, perhaps you know, you're using some other FEA tools. You can import those directly into your, your model. And it's the same idea. You don't need to rebuild anything. The only thing you need to do is parameterize them as you'd like. Uh, make sure you you define the type of motors you want, and then you simply press run. Okay, so the the motor is running on the FPGA. It's coupled to the circuit, and you're um, able to run that in a closed loop. You know, in a matter of let's say 500 nanoseconds. So it's extremely quick. There's a lot of fidelity there, and you can basically uh, do it as you like. Of course, when we start talking about FEA tools, there are certain things that you can see with those as opposed to the classic, let's say, DQ model. So you know, rotor asymmetry. Uh, the back EMF, for example, saturation, cogging torques. These are all things that you expect from your FEA models, but now you can get them in real time running on the FPGA. And lastly, in terms of other simulation tools, of course, if you were using other platforms, such as CarSim, uh, AVL Boost, Cruise, anything inside Simulink, 
we could now integrate those with Veristan. So not, not only do you, you don't need to necessarily go and start from scratch, you can take your existing models, your existing framework, integrate them into Veristan and have now a real-time simulation of those plus whatever else you'd like to simulate uh, in the tool. The last thing I'll talk about is uh, the signal conditioning, because of course that's extremely important. Um, we know that you know devices under test don't always want to talk to you know zero to five volts or zero to ten volts. Sometimes there are different variations in voltage levels, current, resistances, etc. So with the SLSC modules and the chassis from NI, um, OpalRT is developed, and we're currently still developing other cards to be able to make sure that any analog or digital signal that you want to connect to can be conditioned appropriately. Okay. So it looks a little something like this. Um, you know, it's the same basic RTI architecture that uh, NI has proposed. It's the same chassis, and essentially our cards will slide right into the chassis and allow for a different level of flexibility than the cards that are out there. Okay. On top of that, every card can have fault insertion capabilities as well. So um, you know, we we understand that you want to be able to have like pass pass through signals and signal conditioning, but you also want to be able to you know create some faults. Um, not necessarily at the uh, you know forced hardware level, but you know virtually then transmitted to the hardware level like you see right here. So that is also a possibility, and we have these cards currently existing on the market. The last thing I'm going to say is um, in terms of configuring these. So this is all done within the SLS, uh, sorry, within the Veristan toolbox. So it's it's all streamlined, it's all simplified. It's just like adding another PXI module basically to your um, Veristan system definition file. So for some early adopters, um, we think we, we figured we would just mention some names. So some names you see below here, um, some of their applications are listed here, some aren't. But you know, essentially, the we understand that automotive testing is quite broad. It can it can compose of many many different things. So as you can see, we have some benches that are meant for for multiple ECU inside a single bench. Uh, we have some that you know they want to have one sort of platform that they're going to bring all over the world and have their engineers test the same type of topology throughout the world, and as we start talking about, you know, assistance driving and stuff like that, we know that, you know, traction motors are one thing, but when we start talking about, let's say, steering and having like a sort of assistance, uh, steering assistance system, that's also very important. That's kind of a new uh, approach to what we're looking at right now. Okay. So that's it for me. Uh, thanks everyone for listening. Hopefully that kind of introduces the way we, we look at it. Um, and now we have our first guest, uh, Rick Simshik. Um, so I'll let Rick present his part right now.